My name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about how a secure person would communicate to a partner if they needed support. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a series on what a secure person would do in different types of situations, because I find that a lot of different individuals didn't have a lot of secure modeling growing up from their parents or caregivers. So of course that creates the insecure attachment style and it becomes kind of difficult to know like what the right or wrong thing is to do if we don't have a lot of modeling in our upbringing. And of course, a lot of the resources we do get in terms of what teaches us about relationships is from like the media or like romantic comedies or movies or television shows, which usually has a lot to do with like love bombing and, and, you know, these sort of dramatic outcomes without proper communication, without proper understanding and validating each other, validating of each other's feelings, perspectives. So anyways, I'm going to be doing this whole series basically to, to try to um, provide some educational insight into um, what a securely attached style would do if it's something you want some modeling for. And before I dive into this video as well, if you want access to resources about communication, you can check out for free for seven days our communication scripts course. It has a 60 page or uh, 60 situation um, document that talks about all different types of situations, different insecure attachment cells are exposed to. So like an AP communicating with a DA about needing more connection, a DA communicating with an FA about needing space, like all these different dy dynamics. And there's actually scripts lined out there for you that talk about the key points, the needs. Um, so you can download it, you can check it out. It can really help you with communication. And we also now have programs on every single for every single attachment cell with like step by step directions that will actually help you reprogram your attachment style recondition healing is reconditioning right we get conditioned with these ideas, these beliefs that i'm not good enough the belief that i'll be abandoned and conditioning those away into a much healthier format of like, hey, you know, it's possible for relationships to end, but also I'm worthy of love. Like, so anyways, there's all these tools for reconditioning, for healing, for communication, for boundaries. Um, and again, you can check them all, all out for free for seven days using the link in the description box below. So with that being said, one other thing before I dive into this video um, is I know it's vulnerable to, to communicate. I know it can be like really scary when we start communicating. So this can also be something as I give you some steps and ideas to work towards um, that you can ease into over time, right? That you can move towards slowly. I, I remember my first time when I was fearful avoidant and um, really opening up about a feeling and, you know, something I needed and just being so afraid and, and doing it consciously and just being like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Um, so you can warm up to it. You can do it over time and you can always reprogram your fears about communicating, right? So what you make communication mean. For me, for example, I made it mean, oh, well, um, I'll be weak or I'll be powerless if I share my needs with somebody else or I'm vulnerable to somebody else. They have power over me. Um, and, and really that just comes from like usually seeing a lot of modeling in relationships that are the modeling of the power struggle in relationships and not realizing that um, a relationship outside of a power struggle has two people that are communicating vulnerably and willing to support each other. And it's not about giving power away, but actually gaining a sense of personal empowerment through interdependence, through being able to um, ask for support and have that extra support um, to sort of build you up and, and um, to be able to give that to yourself as well. So it's not a mutually exclusive thing, but we tend to get more empowerment through healthy relationships. So anyways, with all that being said, um, the first thing that a secure person would do if they needed support is they would actually feel a sense of confidence in asking for their needs. So generally people who are securely attached feel worthy of their needs. And a lot of it's because of their upbringing and that when they needed something and, and did bring it up, it was usually facilitated in a healthy way or negotiated in a healthy way. So there's a sense of confidence and worthiness of having a need. And so then the securely attached person proceeds to usually share exactly what they're needing and why they're needing it. Um, and they'll tend to do this to, to give context to the other person, right? So it could be something in the relationship or it could be something outside of the relationship. They may need more physical affection in, in the relationship, or they may need um, more reassurance because they're having a hard time at work, right? But they would tend to communicate very specifically what they need support about and why. And then our next step is they will also do this from a place of not being overly attached to outcomes. So they're more like out there looking for support 
and, and receiving and appreciating the support that comes in, but not expecting their partner to be perfect at doing it. The reason we tend to put really high expectations on people outside of us in relationships to do things for us is usually because we feel disempowered to give those things to the relationship to ourselves. So often if you're like, oh, I really need this person to give me reassurance, I ask for it. And then they don't say it exactly the way that you want them to. That tends to be a symptom when you're like really frustrated about that, of you really having like a hole in your own bucket of self-reassurance, right? Usually maybe there's an imbalance between having a lot more self-criticism than, than reassurance in relationship to self. And so what you'll see is in the moment somebody gets it wrong outside of you by not speaking to you exactly how you would need them to, we tend to place basically higher expectations on people outside of us when we're disempowered inside of us first, because we don't know how to do it. So you better do it for me and don't make any mistakes because I'm already running on empty, right? So it's this sort of dynamic at a subconscious level. Um, and so there tends to be like this dynamic of not having too many expectations or attachments. And then also um, there is this willingness to receive, right? Even if it's imperfect to just receive support, to know that the person's trying to be able to see that, validate it, feel it, let it land. Um, and, and then last but not least, the securely attached person tends to give very, very specific ideas for what they're needing. So the securely attached person might say, um, you know, I need some words of affirmation. I need physical touch for me. That's hand holding more often. That's like physical affection when we're sitting, watching a movie together. Um, or they might say, I need consistency. And that looks like calling back more frequently and more often, or that looks like um, following through with plans, or that looks like um, consistency in the way you communicate with me in, in whatever form that is. They may say, I just need a hug right now. They may say, I need reassurance. And for me, it's about work specifically, or it's about the relationship specifically. So they'll give really specific context. Another place that communication goes wrong for insecurely attached individuals is when they communicate, but they don't get specific enough. And then it can be this sort of like double-edged sword where it's like you communicate, you think you're doing the work to be vulnerable, but you weren't specific enough. And then your partner didn't really understand exactly what you really needed. And so then they proceeded to give you the wrong thing. And then you feel like you're rejected. And this is something I would see happen so often in couples relationships. And um, it's something that can really be solved for by being clear, by being specific. Um, and then I said, last but not least, but this is actually last but not least, and then following through, okay? Um, you know, if you tell somebody something once, but it's not in the norm of the relationship to be doing that, um, then don't be afraid to ask them again for the same thing, you know, a few days later or a week later and to remind and to reinforce um, because we have to really see our needs through in order for both parties in a relationship to sort of get programmed into the idea of meeting those needs. So to be able to go, oh, okay, my partner really needs this on a consistent basis. Okay, great, I can show up for it. And I'm learning that. And part of the relationships and communication is, is that learning of each other, right? Is that ability to discuss things openly, transparently, and consistently until that becomes that set point for the relationship, until that becomes the new normal. So um, a really great tool to use. And again, you can check out our communication scripts course for free for seven days. Um, we also have programs for each and every attachment style, as I mentioned, you can check those out as well for free for seven days by clicking the link below um, to really up level your communication and also your self-awareness about what you really need in relationships and what that looks like. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.